Hello, today is January 5th, 2018, and this is Casey Mullen, Chair of the MLA Vocabulary Subcommittee. Today, I'm going to give you a preview of a new OCLC toolkit that demonstrates the potential for machine generation of faceted vocabulary terms based on Library of Congress subject headings within MARC bibliographic records for music resources. This toolkit and the OCLC macro it incorporates was designed by Gary Strawn of Northwestern University with editorial oversight by the MLA Vocabulary Subcommittee. Over the past several years, we have studied how the contents of LC subject headings and other coded data in MARC bibliographic records can be analyzed and their components mapped to faceted data such as terms from the LC Medium of Performance Thesaurus, LCMPT, genre form terms, LCGFT, demographic group terms, LCDGT, and more. Although the toolkit works on a single record at a time, the algorithm running in the background can be scaled to operate on large quantities of records in batch. This demonstration, and a more detailed description of the project overall, will be fully explained at a presentation at the upcoming MLA annual meeting in Portland in early February, given by Gary and myself. A description of the session is on the MLA program website here, in case you'd like to take note. We hope to see many of you there, where you will be able to ask questions about what you were about to see today. We'll begin by showing you how to download and install the toolkit. If you have used Strawn's Authority Toolkit, then you are familiar with this process. You can download the installer by opening this zip file. For further download instructions, along with a wealth of information about using the toolkit, see this page. The URL to this page will be publicized around the time of the MLA annual meeting, so stay tuned. Over the next few weeks, we will be concluding the current round of active testing, after which time the toolkit and associated documentation will be available to the broader community for additional testing and feedback. This video was created to give members of the MLA Cataloging and Metadata Committee and its subcommittees a sneak preview of the toolkit. If, however, you are watching this video after early February, then all of the aforementioned publicity has already occurred and you are here to learn about engaging and testing of your own. Whoever you are, thank you in advance for your time and attention. After you have installed the toolkit, you will want to add it to your connection environment for easy access. From the Tools menu, you can access the Key Maps function to assign a shortcut key, and I'll show you after you've installed it, the algorithm, excuse me, the toolkit here is called Music Add Fields. You can also access the User Tools menu and assign a toolbar button. In my case, I have chosen this latter method. And uh, you'll see button number two is what we'll be using today. The toolkit can be run on a single bibliographic record within OCLC Connection, so long as the record type, that is byte six of the leader, is C, D, or J. Today, I will demonstrate the toolkit on a mixture of score and sound recording records. Note that the non-relevant portions of the records have been removed to reduce scrolling. First, I will show a fairly straightforward example. This record has a single subject heading, viola and piano music, scores and parts. When I run the toolkit, you can see that several fields are added to the record in a matter of seconds. A 382 field, showing the instrumentation of one viola and one piano for a total of two performers has been generated. An array of 655 fields has also been added, namely chamber music, since the work is for two performers, and terms that describe the format of the music, scores and parts music. In the next example, I'll show how the algorithm knows how to parse standard com combinations of instruments. In this case, string quartets. Run the toolkit, and voila, a 382 listing the specific instrumentation of two violins, viola, and cello for a total of four instruments has been added. In this example, we'll see how the algorithm analyzes not just the 650 fields in the record, 
but also selected coded data in the 008 and 047 fields. Although this work consists of preludes and fugues, the subject heading canons, fugues, etc. glosses over the specific forms that are present. However, the 047 field gives the MARC composition codes PR and FG. Watch what happens when I run the toolkit. The algorithm has generated few, uh, 655s for preludes music and fugues. You'll notice that the output this time will require a little bit of human editing. The third 65 here is for art music, and it's based on the 650 fields, since this is the most specific term that can be derived from this multiple subject heading. I would delete the 655 field, since it is redundant with the narrower terms generated from the 047. You'll also notice that the last 655 field is notated music. This is also less than ideal, but unfortunately, the format of music code and the 300 field in this AACR2 record do not indicate that this resource meets the definition of score, which it does according to the definition in RDA and LCGFT, which is the same definition. So, as the human agent in this process, I would replace notated music with scores. Let's turn now to a sound recording example. This recording of jazz music is described with a single subject heading that describes multiple attributes in 650 subfields A, Z, and Y, respectively. Let's watch how the algorithm maps each piece of faceted data to its appropriate place in the record. We now see a 655 field for jazz, a 370 field showing the place of origin of the content, and an 046 field showing the time period of creation of the content. Once again, as a human in this process, I would refine the data in the 046 field to reflect the more specific range of years indicated in the subtitle, which is 1956 to 1959. But in terms of mapping the data in the existing subject heading to its appropriate faceted data fields, I will note that the algorithm has done so losslessly in this example. In the final example for today, we'll look at a sound recording, which is a compilation of works with different genres, forms, and mediums of performance. This particular recording includes works by Schubert for a variety of performing forces, each described with separate subject headings. Let's see what happens when we run the toolkit. The 655 fields are in line with what we would expect. Let's look more closely at the 382 fields, however. The 382 is describing the symphony, the string quartet, and the piano sonata need no further refinement. However, the 382 fields describing the vocal works could be refined by a human. In this case, I would change high voice to the more specific soprano voice in both of the vocal fields. And in the final 382, I would replace instrumental ensemble with terms for clarinet and piano, and adjust the numeric subfields accordingly so that they describe an ensemble of exactly three performers. It is worth noting that, these refinements notwithstanding, the toolkit has produced precisely the same data as is already present in the subject headings. So a bibliographic record like this is an ideal candidate for batch processing with little human intervention. I hope this demonstration has adequately shown the potential of the MLA Strawn algorithm and how its OCLC implementation here can streamline copy cataloging of music resources. We look forward to receiving your feedback after you've had a chance to try it out yourself. Please note that we know the algorithm is not yet perfect and the programming code is subject to frequent updates. So please check back to the download webpage from time to time to ensure you are benefiting from the latest version of the toolkit. Thank you and have a great day.